Um, so by the magic of blab, and I have to, um, I have to say, I don't normally look like an albino. I've got an eye infection, so that's why I look. Oh, like don't this. worry, so, you look gorgeous. You just look gorgeous. Oh, it's and it's like, I'm sitting in a very, very sunny spot, and it's almost as if there's this glare. I do that because it makes my skin look better. I've got this light and I just turn it up. Oh, and it's, yeah, look at that. See, my skin looks amazing and it covers all my spots. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> so we both look very glamorous. Oh, and Bridget she loves me even though I'm an albino. Thank you. That's Aww, true friendship that's for sweet. you. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for coming on board to have a chat today because I think that this is an important conversation to have for women that are starting out that are going and we had a blab yesterday and we were talking about get going and it's like and you're so excited so energized so enthusiastic and then you hit a few stumbling blocks and you're like no no i've got this i've got this and then you get to that bit in the middle where you're just like holy shit i'm gonna quit i have to quit this isn't working oh my god i suck i'm so rubbish <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> and yeah it's just crazy stuff so um, we're going to have a chat about the three important success factors for, oh, my dog is a ferocious guard dog, a little Maltese shih tzu. Who's, so I'm just, yeah, just ignore her. Um, <laughs> it might get harder and harder as she keeps barking. Hold on one second. Lottie! Wait. Lottie! You're not going to see Oprah doing that, are you? No. It's keeping it <laughs> well, on the I don't know if you can hear my, my bird in the background. The, the more I talk, the more the bird chirps. So it's almost, <laughs> okay, well, let's have this competition. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a nice background sound. Like, rap, 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 is like a scrappy little dog. Um, yeah, so the three important success factors. And I think that being an entrepreneur we just have to keep reminding ourselves of them and picking up other people when they forget and i think this is the what is that? it's like a trip to the zoo over there yeah brilliant. you've got like a whole zoo it happening is. in the background it's, it's great what sort of birds have you got it's a budgie and it's just one but he sees it's himself one. in a mirror it's only one but he sees himself in a mirror and so he attacks this mirror because he thinks it's the other birds and just oh my talks all day long it's just too cute <laughs> oh my god that's so funny have you taught him to say anything no not yet no i don't have the yeah. patience for that no <laughs> are you from south africa yes oh where are you based i'm in tasmania at the moment so i'm staying in australia but yes south yeah, yeah. african living in australia yes. oh cool kiwi living in australia so yeah <laughs> place to be milk, land yeah, of milk and honey yeah, it is. I love it. Now that Tony Abbott's gone, the Prime Minister, the budgie smuggling Prime Minister, it's a much, much better. Put your Tony Abbott out. <laughs> Bringing politics onto the call. So, um, American living in New Zealand, Bridget over there. Yeah, nice. You Americans get around, don't you? Um, so do you want to tell us a bit about yourself, Brenda, and then we can jump into the conversation. And if anybody else would like to, one, there's a couple of things you can do. Over here, tell a little bird. Share this shit out, yo. And then the other thing is, if you'd like to follow Brenda and myself, you click on our names and we follow, and then we'll follow you back if you're our um, kind of people. And then... Um, yeah, if you want to jump into the hot seat as well, that's the third thing. I'm so good at housekeeping. Look at this. Jump into the hot seat if you'd like to join the conversation, or you can keep coming up in the chat because I will keep reading and um, dragging you in, even if you're just typing. So do you want to tell us a bit about yourself, Brenda? <laughs> um, I actually, this question is sort of like, oh, where, where do you really start? And I was on yeah. a, a call the other day. I was having somebody speak to me because it was a director's position available and they wanted, um, they were looking at my skill set for the specific position. And he said to me, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Tell me what's on your resume. And I said to him, I'll tell you what, why don't I tell you what's not on my resume? Because that'll <laughs> give you a better, better idea of who I am than what the resume does. So I'll start with that today. So i um, basically born and raised in South Africa. I um, lived in a very small rural town um, at about um, 
Uh, two, uh, 2009, well, actually 2007, we were um, almost killed back in South Africa in our own home. You know, it's it's not exactly oh, one of the safest oh. countries. It's the most beautiful sure. country, but it's not the safest country. And so yeah. at that stage, I had four children. I've got a son who's now 27, 19. They were much younger at, at that stage. And I've got a little nine and 10-year-olds. And they were two and three. And so at that stage, we just thought, look, we have to move. We've got yeah. our children Opportunity. Sorry about that. Uh, won't you please open up that um, dishwasher for me? Because it's not stopping. Just open it up so I can continue with this call. Okay. Just open it here. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I've got something wrong <laughs> with the dishwasher. No, you love so, how real life just keeps coming oh, on. You can, switch like, it off. Oh, yeah. can you switch it off? Here we go. I have no idea what's going on with it. In any case, so it made... <laughs> Made our decision. We made our decision to move to Australia because we wanted to give our children um, a much better opportunity than what than what they would have had if they'd stayed back in South Africa. And it was wow. a godsend. It was actually we just felt we were so called to come and live in Tasmania. We'd researched yeah. it on the internet. We'd never been in Australia before at all. And um, my husband just one day decided, well, look, you know, this is where we're going to go. And so he applied for a position in a place called Wagga Wagga, um, of all places. <laughs> yeah, I have is that no idea what it's Sydney? I don't know what it's I think it's in New South Wales, yeah, but the thing is, yeah. it took us two and a half years to get our visa approved to go to Wagga Wagga, oh and it was it was this highs and lows, emotional, emotional two and a half years. And about a month or so before we were supposed to leave, my husband said, we're not going to Wagga Wagga. I think we should go to Tasmania. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. If we go to Tasmania... <laughs> If we have to start with this application a process again and they decline my first visa that's been approved as a result of this, I'm going to kill you. I'm just going to kill yeah, you. Yeah. And he said, Brenda, you've got to have faith. Okay, I think we've got to go to Tasmania. And so we put in our application and four days later, our visa was approved. Yeah. Wow. So wow. we really feel like there was just something there that just put us in the space. And obviously coming from a very senior um, position back in South Africa, corporate and all of that stuff, I had a lot of status, a good um, company, you know, good company that I worked for was one of the top banks in South Africa, was in corporate there, nominated as South African Businesswoman of the Year and had, wow. a, you know, Maids, gardeners, a, a huge house, Tuscan Villa on the edges of the um, the river. I thought I had it made, and when I arrived in I Australia, it was that. Like, I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> it was well, you nobody, you're just nobody in, in Australia. It's like you don't have status, you have got no title, you have no job, you have got no car. You, you know, we we came over with three thousand dollars. That's what we started our new life with three thousand dollars in my purse. Four Could children. Did you not bring money over? Is that why? Is that no? Part of that's the what we had. That's or that's we saw off everything basically right. except our home back there and yeah. that's what we had it cost us that much to come over and oh, so yeah, we so arrived with yeah it's so expensive yeah to immigrate it, well, it is i mean we came here with um 16 bags that was our clothes and everything in it and uh, we'd shipped some of our furniture across but it hadn't arrived yet so we stayed in a home for two months without any furniture absolutely nothing wow. Wow. And it was during, you know, when you when you get to that stage, it's almost like you get a half time in your life. Some people call it a, a midlife crisis. Some call it a midlife whatever breakthrough. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It was, I call it my half time. It's like when you move from success to significance and suddenly you wake up one morning and you realize, well, who the hell am I? Yeah, you know, I don't have to find myself before and you've got all these titles and all this energy yeah. that's around you. And then when that goes, I've had the same thing and I'm just like, well, who am I now? Who am exactly. I? Mm. And that's exactly what happened to me. And it was—it took me about a year, and I decided, look, you know what? Oh, how do I contribute? Um, where do I add value? Who am I? What am I? Value? What do I stand for? And it was almost like, well, Brenda, you know what? You've got the golden opportunity to redefine who you are, yeah. find your identity, just discover all of that about yourself. And so I enrolled for co a coaching program, and did my NLP. How long my ago advanced. was that? How long that ago was, was that? in in twenty ten? Actually, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. not that long and ago. And so. No, it, well, it's not. And uh, uh, came back thinking, yay, I'm a coach. I'm a coach. I'm going to start a business. And then thought, well, I'm a coach now. Everybody should be knocking down my door because everybody wants a coach. Yeah, I'm brilliant. <laughs> Come and get advice from me. I am like the oracle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And just suddenly realized six months into it that, you know what? Nobody's going to knock on your door. Nobody's no. going to come and find you. Nobody's going to say, oh, yay, I'm waking up and I need a coach tomorrow morning. And I suddenly realized that marketing 
became a very important component of my business. And I realized that even, it doesn't matter what business you're in, you're a marketer first and foremost. Yeah. You have to market your business. But Marketing it's not just the sales. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, but it's the mindset as well. And to me, that was, you know, you mentioned in your introduction that, um, you know, we get to this place where we start bumping our heads and we say, want to give it all up and all this stuff comes up and everything. Like that. And that, the only thing that can get you through, it's not strategy, it's mindset. Exactly. So that brings me on to um, a good thing. And I want some interaction from the comments over here. Oh, I just said, hey, hey Deb, and then I deleted it. Hey, Deb, there you go. I said it twice. Okay, it showed up. So we were talking the other day when we were talking about our content for today, and you get a hey twice. Hey, Sarah, welcome. So talking about the mindset, um, but there, what are your two other success factors? And then I want people in the comments to jump in and say what they think their most three important success factors are as an entrepreneur. So what, what are your ones? How would you, what would you say? With, uh, with uh, you know, for me, the first is definitely having an unstoppable mindset. We go through so many things in our minds as entrepreneurs because we work in isolation. We don't work in offices where we can bounce ideas off with people and um, because they're right there. We have this space where we're sitting in and sometimes you feel lonely and isolated and you feel like, well, this is not working. Who can I reach out to? I'm going to give up. So yeah. mindset without a doubt, get over that, you know, um, and I, I can speak about this forever and a day the fear and the doubts and everything but definitely mindset. the second thing is consistency is to yeah. be consistent in your approach it doesn't matter what marketing strategy you put out you, you use just be consistent in it so if it's social media be consistent on social media be consistently visible put yourself out there and then you know um, the third thing is, is is taking inspired action you know you yeah. can take action but, well, you know what, action is just action, but when you take inspired action, it actually means that you're just doing something that will really move you towards achieving your goal. So it's the mindset, the, the consistency and the, ac and the action that to me oh, yeah. are just so important. Really I totally important. agree on that. I totally agree with all of them. But the third one as well, because I have fallen into spells of busy work, of just being so freaking busy. And people are like, how are you? I'm like, busy. I'm like, what am I actually doing? You're going to read some of these now. So Sarah's got a couple of good ones. The mantra of do not quit. Engraved. Yeah. Love that, Sarah. Your brain. Um, collaborative nature. You can't do it alone. And that is so true as well. You're missing a third one there, Sarah. Come on. <laughs> open open your brain up. Um, and we've got Peep Social. Now, this is Eleanor, I think, if I can just remember. No, Cherie. Cherie just said, persistent, self-knowing, and passionate about what you do. Bridget said, consistency is huge. Keep doing it every day. And that's the other thing as well. Like I go through phases of being hugely visible and probably saturating the market with my face. Rah, listen to me. Buy my shit. And then, and then I have to regroup. So I'm working and it's, it's an ongoing process of like trying to get systems that work for you. And now I'm working on being more consistent. So, um, <laughs> Deb said she's only been here seconds and loves Brenda already. I know. I was very, very happy that she wanted to come on my call. Um, Cherie, focus on action, not results. Very true. Yes. Sarah, and number three, she's out with the number three. Nice one. Thought, not just action. Plan out your moves. And Bridget, you've got a fan club here, Brenda. Now, this is a timely thing. If you all love Brenda, she's got a Facebook group. Um, and what's your Facebook group? Have you got the link there, Brenda, that you can pop oh, your Facebook group in there? I'll tell you what, I'll just go back. I'll just log into Facebook and quickly look it up and then I'll pop it yeah. into the group. But it and is called it Business now. by Design for Women in Business. Um, like increase your, yeah, your impact, influence and income. Cherie, did you come over and join the Moxie Entrepreneur? I can't remember. I've got my own Facebook group and it would be nice to have you in there. I see quite a few familiar faces in here of people that are actually in the group already, but I'm not quite sure if you came over. What else have I seen join over here? Hey, Nick, nice to, nice to meet you, virtually meet you. Hi, Michael, come on in. We are oh, talking and about the three most important success factors in entrepreneurial and just success. a disclaimer sorry guys i do love you all i really and truly do but this group is just for women in business if you're a woman in business <laughs> then you're welcome into this group we and that's it but men i'm going to be thinking about opening up something later but right now no space for you 
I know that's what happens is um, Sarah just said, I've just put the Moxie Entrepreneur and it's the same thing. It's for women in business and all the guys then leave the call. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> sorry, it was so sorry. And um, you said it so nicely on, on one of my blabs the other day. I was like, so this isn't for guys, it's just for girls and all the guys left. So we love you guys. But yeah, these are women in business groups. Um, <laughs> Deb said, you know that you girls are missing 50% of the market with just women. But the thing is, Deb, it doesn't work that way, you know, mm -hmm. because I am focusing on women and I've noticed, now the guys are really going to leave, I've noticed even with these blabs, a guy comes onto the call and the energy changes. And I've been in groups with these guys and the energy changes and I just like the... Women are fifty percent of my clients. Yeah, you know what? It's not all guys by yeah. industry. But. And if I can just jump in there as well, it's it's you know what? It's not that the guys are excluded. Don't get me wrong, because when you really and truly identify your ideal client and you know who it is, it isn't that it's a female or it's a male. There's a certain quality that you are looking for to be able to work yep. because you know you can help that person with that certain quality. When that yes. quality is whether it's male or female, okay, that and your copy and your message out there is correct, irrespective of if whether you a female person or a male person whoever it is that resonates with that marketing message will be attracted to you that's just yes. how it is but this specific group is just a group to support women in business because why we have so many more limitations i think personally than what men do they just seem to go out there and just do it where we get yep. stuck up and hung up in the stuff that goes on in our yes. brain so true. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the party. Hey, Sarah. Hello. Hi. So you had some good, you had three good things. Now you have to come up with another three now that you're on the court. No, that's mean. So I'll tell you what my three are. <laughs> you're like, shut up. Yeah, you um, yours while I think of another three. <laughs> so for me, um, hey, Deb, do you want to jump on the call? Um, Bridget, yeah, anybody? Yeah. Come on, guys. Get yourselves visible. Jump on that seat. All right. So for me, it's showing up, um, and that's, that's being visible, that's actually just getting your face out there and having something to say, which is linked to that. So that's 1A and 1B, tenacity, so don't give up. And then the mindset is the most important thing, and it's breaking through. <laughs> um, she just said bad hair day over here, and I thought she was saying that I was having a bad hair day because, to be honest, mine's not looking that amazing. <laughs> Uh, I know lots of people haven't done their hair and some might be sitting in their pajamas, but that's okay. Yeah, but the mindset to me is huge. And <laughs> thanks for that, Sarah. That's my pajamas. Oh, I thought you were showing me your feet. I was like, oh. No, no, my pajamas. I, but hey. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. Um, jump on into the seat if you like. Hi, Crystal. Your seat. Uh, so, yeah, the mindset. And the thing is, um, I've been an entrepreneur for 18 months and I've had like side entrepreneurial gigs before then, but you're not all in. And so being all in and having that as this has got to work, I do not have a plan B. Plan B is get a job and I cry when I look on seat. So, hi, Sam. Welcome to the party. Hi, Army Wives. Um, and yeah, mindset. I have learned more about myself in the last 18 months than I have in my entire life. Mm. I am now more confident and not that surface confidence of like, Rah! you know, it's a deep confidence in backing myself in my own ability. And I say this on nearly every blab, but it's so true. It deserves to be said again that you like entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is the fastest personal development thing you can ever do. And I do course launching. And so it's kind of like within a six week period, you're taking all the skills that you have as an entrepreneur and then it's all compressed. And that again, that's like entrepreneurial stuff like on steroids. So yeah, you learn a lot about yourself. I just, I just saved you from typing. Nice one, Shireen. <laughs> Self-development, yeah, that's the thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, just backing yourself and knowing that you can actually do it. Well, I, I have something. Have and I went. I went to the hairdresser last week, and my hairdresser said, "You know, you need a break. What would? Be, where would you go? Where would the place be that you would go to like get a break?" And I said, "A uh, mental hospital." <laughs> <laughs> and she said, "Why did you choose that?" I'm like, "Well, because I wouldn't actually have to make any decisions. Yeah, nothing. Like even just making basic decisions, like what I have to eat." Yeah. Like if I just go on vacation, I have to still decide things. And like I think what the thought of like when you're in a launch and you're making decisions like 
or when you're doing something really intense in your business and you're just making decisions all the time. Yeah. You know, like brain is just like Mush. done. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But you know what? I was talking to a friend about that the other day and it is important for entrepreneurs to have a break. And I haven't had a huge amount of breaks over the last year. Um, <laughs> Sam came on to look for Moxie. Excellent, Sam. Oh, hi, Deb. She's done a hiss. Come on. Nice one. I was talking about the um, best place to have a break. And that's in an airplane. Oh, look at you looking so pretty in your new house. Deb has moved oh, to the Hawke's Bay. Is that your new place? Yeah, yeah, she has my big office. I get my very own yeah. office. I just need a couch in here or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, you're channeling Mad Men over there. Nice oh, one. It looks huge. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's quite big. So I need my own couch where I can, you know, have my little read, you know. <laughs> you need a VA as well. Well, not a VA. It ought to be a PA because she's actually there. Well, yeah, I've, you got need, another, um, I've got another office right next door. So, yeah, that's where I can put everyone. <laughs> oh, my wow. God. So you, is, that like an, is that in your house? Yeah. Yeah, like the what house is, is out there. So it, Yeah, so this whole section like here. It's a wing of her house, eh? Yeah, you've got a wing. Yeah, I a wing have. Of house. Like when you look at it, you've got the whole side of the house. It's sort of out. It's, I think it's a new addition, but... You know, we've kind of got the swimming pool for breaks and stuff, so I'm quite excited about using that when it gets hot enough. You've got a swimming <laughs> pool as well. Oh, my God, you're rocking down to Abby over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I just had to join you girls because when I saw you talking about um, the guy thing, at first I was like, because my husband said to me, he goes, if you work with women, Deb, you're going to miss out on like 50% of the market. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. But then you said something, I think it was Brenda that said something about a uh, the the mind the um the way we have such different mindsets and um when you um like have you seen like, I saw this video the other week on how women sell and how men sell and yeah, you know, yeah that's, 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 oh, yeah yeah that's, that's the one so you've seen how they sell and truly I saw that and I was like that is so me it's like you know you've yeah. got the thing to sell and it's like Oh, I don't know if it's good enough, and you yeah. know, oh, it's all these We're things that go behind the day. So, yeah, totally, totally. You know, I totally agree. Love. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving you some love there. It just makes me feel sad when people aren't about even. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Deb, if I can give you just one like little tiny, just a thing that changed my whole mindset about the selling thing as well. In yeah. any case. It's that because I really had a huge, I come out of a sales background, believe it or not, but yet I hate selling. And so um, I really struggled, you know, because it would mean I'd have to get on a call and I'd feel like, oh, I'm actually having to convince somebody that I'm good enough for them to be able to work with me. And you know what? It's not about that at all. It's not about you convincing anybody that they have to work with you. No. The fact is you're taking them through a conversation where you are showing them exactly where their potential is, what they can achieve. And it's through this conversation that you're having with them that you uncover the gaps and yeah. you then propose yourself to close the gap, basically. And you yeah. do it in a way that we get in our own way because what we're doing is we're thinking, oh, I'm going to be rejected. What will they think of me? Oh, what if I can't deliver? And, oh, I don't want to come across as being salesy. So the focus is only on me, 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 me. When you yeah. take the focus off yourself and you put it on the other person and you think of it as I am here to serve that person to the best of my capability, Yep. to give them what they need to be able to move from ya to ya, okay, and you're the bridge that closes that gap, then you, the focus is gone from you. And totally what it feels sure. like is it changes that whole conversation because they no longer are you coming from a place where you want something for yourself. You're coming from a place where you are giving from your heart to somebody else to help them achieve what they need to achieve. Totally yep. different. Feels yeah, different. Yeah, different energy. So good. That I think um, my... I, I think like I'm good with that because well, like I'm way too busy. I have too many people coming to me. But what I'm trying to do is I'm transitioning at the moment. So I think it's really um, what I'm finding the harder is just believing that like because I've created a couple of online courses and I think that where you lack, you know, when you're an, an entrepreneur is the confidence in what you've built. Like for me, I'm like, yes, it's awesome because, you know, it's got a lot of great info in there. But then I'm thinking, is it too easy for some people? But what yeah. you forget is that we're the experts. So long as you know more than the average person out there, you're an expert in your field, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, you just need to be well, a yeah, couple of steps ahead and be able to pull people along behind you. I'm just going to read a couple of comments 
just yeah. to keep people into the conversation. Then I'll go over to you, Sarah, because I just interrupted you then. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My mother gets it all the time. <laughs> so um, Cherie from Peach Social said, plus a little known fact, around midlife, a woman's brain chemicals actually change, becoming more like those of teens. They do start disconnecting and, and start putting themselves first. Um, she didn't say that. That was just me. Except with the life experience. <laughs> it's actually really cool. Yeah, I agree. And that happened. Well, I don't have kids. But I sometimes say to my cats, I need a moment. <laughs> Sam <laughs> said, selling is hard for so many. Doing a sales training blab about it on Friday, it's a challenge for most entrepreneurs. Yeah, definitely. I've got 20 years of sales experience. So for me, it's just a natural sort of thing. But I've just realized I don't have discovery calls in my um, in my sales process because I actually don't need them but I am going to start introducing them into people that um hey Monica I was just saying like oh Brennan's come on hi Brennan I didn't even see you pop in there sales, sales um, should be a natural thing like to me I don't like the idea of I, I don't think it should be about hey I've got to sell you this kind of like what Brenda was saying it's not about you it's about helping them so so a sale is, to me, it's a very natural thing, a natural occurrence that occurs, you know, like once you've once you've got past the introductory stage of how you can help each other or how you can yeah. help a person, you know what I mean? So Yeah, no discovery well, calls. One of the things that I use yeah, that really helps is instead of talking about it, thinking about it from a sales perspective, I think about it from the question, how can I help you? Yeah. And so I start a lot of sales truly sales conversations with how can I help you? Yeah. And then they tell me and then what their issue is. And then I say, well, you know, do you want help from that with that? Right. Like once they say like, Oh, this is what I need, you know, and we talk about their issue and then do you want that? You know, okay, let's do it. Do you want it to that person to be me? Which is, you know, I, I didn't say it that great, but the whole point is that you just focus on how can I help you? I mean, I think we've gotten into this really advanced, you know, gotten away from that basic thing. Like yeah. when you walk into a store, people say, how can I help you? Yeah. Right. Jerry said sharing wow. versus selling. No one wants to be sold to, but everyone wants to buy yeah. to meet their needs. That's the yeah. thing. And it's it's not having it shoved in your face. And um, Sam said, I've discovered something called NLP sales conversations. Yes, I've been yes, studying that myself. Yes. Yeah, and it's um, it's all about neuro, neuro linguistic programming and it's all about um, using language to trigger lizard brains and to trigger um, emotions. And sometimes when people are talking about it, and I, don't, I think all the guys have gone, but when there's some internet marketers and they talk about it and it just sounds scammy and it sounds awful, but um, when used properly, it can just get you further down the path to actually helping somebody. So there's quite a lot of, um, yeah, it's not at all. I agree. Um, it's, yeah. I, I just want to go actually back well, to you, Sam, before talking about- If you approach it from the standpoint that you're trying to help somebody. Mm. Yeah, I mean, but if you- I think some of those internet marketer guys, I mean, a lot of them are in it for the money, but- when they're doing it, like when I'm reading their copy, I can see some of the stuff and it's just scammy and they're not coming at it from that point of view. So I agree, when you are coming at it from a point of view. Um, Monica said, I was in sales for almost 10 years in the cellular industry. I learned that a lot of people don't know how to articulate their actual needs. That's the thing. Sometimes when you do say to people, what do you want? They don't actually know themselves. So it's asking, being able to have enough questions and enough rapport with them that you can have a conversation and start pulling all that information out. In in addition to the NLP, um, I don't know if you know that. Um, so in Australia, there's something they have probably once or twice a year. I think it's called the NAC. It's the National National Something Congress, and they have this once a year, and they bring out speakers from um, United States who are really well versed in in um, using hypnotic language and NLP. So I'm an NLP practitioner, but I definitely yep. don't sell like that because it's just it's unethical. It's not right. And well, that's my opinion. In any case, if you want to use it, then would be you know go ahead and use it. But how still, do you think it's do you, do you want to go back to um, break that down. So how do you think that it's unethical to use NLP sort of language? Like if you were to use, if you Look, knew, say for instance, like if you were to say, um, I mean, there's just simple things like imagine if, like if you're using that in your sales copy, straight away you're putting that sort of um, picture into somebody's head. Um, yes. And you can use some embedded commands like um, you could say, by now you've realized, which 
And if you put that right by your buy now button, people have just read buy now, you've realized. And it's like, oh yeah, now I know that this is something. Like to me, that doesn't feel scammy. To me, that just feels like you're using something that you know that can trigger something in somebody's brain, but they're not going to buy it if they don't want it anyway. Yeah. So what, exactly. what, what do you no, think? I'm, I'm a sales copy letter. I think it is, um, when I read sales copy letters, sometimes it can be really well hidden over this. The co sales copy yeah. reads really well. What I'm talking about is big rooms and big conferences where the person right. is right. really and truly using a lot of hypnotic language to oh, press right. yeah, yeah, yeah. emotional button, like the NAC yeah. Congresses. And I have been in a room where people have, I mean, um, done a 90 minute presentation that by the time they 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 have primed the audience to go and buy at the the whatever the table yeah. that two-thirds of the audience gets up credit card in hand to go and purchase and they do eight hundred thousand to a million dollars worth of deals in that room i'm saying wow. if you had given those people 24 hours after the time okay to go and make a decision would they still make the decision to buy or are no. they buying because they feel number one triggered by the language that's been used absolutely emotions are being triggered and we all know we buy from an emotional um perspective in any case it's a, it's definitely a mindset thing and, yeah. a, and a heart based decision that you make and then um you know, so I think that there should be some way to be able to regulate that because why you need to be able to, you, you shouldn't just have to whip out your credit card because why you've been triggered emotionally to feel that I need this when in actual fact, if you had to sit down and think about it, you probably don't need that program. Yeah. Um, at all because we know that it's not the pro people buy programs all day long i sell programs all day long i'm a coach i do this you know i specialize in entrepreneurial mindset and yet to me it's i really want to make sure that i have my client's best interest at heart because the worst thing to have is post dissonance is to have somebody purchase something from you and then go away 24 48 hours later and feel sorry about the purchase it yeah. does yeah. your reputation harm that. and it doesn't help them one thing that I've learned um, just as a buyer of anything, um, if I'm making a purchase that, that's, you know, a decent amount, then I will actually go away, think about it overnight, and then go back and purchase. It's just something I've learned to do. Yes. Because I've my mind that. I do that too. Always change. Yeah. But there is one time just recently I was on a, um, <laughs> Bronwyn knows actually, I was on a ClickFunnels webinar. And at the end of it, they had this massive, great deal of, of you know, buy the, get the enterprise, everything in excess of the enterprise account. But the only reason I made that big purchase online right there and then, aside from the scarcity, because that was one of the things, you had to be one of the first 50 people to do it, um, that was very well done by them. But in saying that, it was such a good deal because it was cheaper than the actual um, year of the standard click funnel. So... I think it depends on the deal, on if you know, you know, you're going to get, you know, if you if you know it's right for you. Yeah, um, totally. And that was a bloody good deal. I'm so jealous of that deal. So <laughs> basically, um, you got it for a thousand dollars. You got a year's worth of, um, of uh, click funnels. Yeah. But now, and so that was ninety seven dollars a month. But now she's it's two ninety seven a month for like the whole shebang. And now yeah. you've got that as well. So you've saved a couple of grand. So yeah, I'm really really jealous. So, so that was good, but that same with what Brenda said, it's that was a complete fit for me. So, yeah, you know, I was not going to go away and regret that. Um, yeah, but you know, when, when I make That's a big the difference, I, I actually do go away and think about it because in the past I've done it before. Oh, how when I was well, a young thing, I'm still young, but you know, real young, <laughs> I brought a Tony Robbins program, and you know, I don't know, there's a few hundred and. Did I get anything? I probably started it. Yeah, I've started this a couple of times. This was before the internet, people. Yes, I was around yeah. before the internet. So was I. I got his CDs and I've still got them. Me and too. I've, I've used about you know, this three of them. Those, those old cassette tapes that you used power to get. Power passion. Yeah, yeah power passion. Something for whatever. I got one of those. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Okay, but now I'm, I watch his stuff on YouTube. He's so amazing. Like, he's still got it. And I'm like, why didn't I ever listen to those CDs? It's crazy. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the um, some of the things. And then I'm going to tell you a horror story about um, when I I got sold into a seminar. And so, um, okay, so Monica said, we were taught needs-based selling and using their words back when offering solutions by painting a picture. Perfect. I'm going to give you a star for that. Brilliant. 
Um, and Cherie says, worse, what they think they want. You know that they won't get them there, so helping them get there in the end takes true heart and caring. Yep, turning people down if they're not right for it. Um, and Sarah said, selling from the stage is not a fan. And then she tempered that further down, saying small sales from the stage are fine, but big ticket items, not so much. Um, and Sam's heard it misused in huge seminars, which, yeah, I don't agree with that either. Um, Monica says, they started pushing us to find their pain points to get sales. I, I believe in finding people's pain points to get a sale yeah, because if you don't know what that is, then how can you sell to them? But when mm -hmm. it feels slimy and if it's inauthentic, that's what it is. Yeah. If you're doing that from a position of this is where you are, I've got a solution. And by, by having this conversation, are we going to meet in the middle? If not, then, hey, we're going to go like that. So um, mm -hmm. Sam has read about $10,000 nightmare stories about that. Rick says training and skepticism, not more regulation. I don't think it's about regulation. I think it's just about not being a douchebag. Um, <laughs> Sarah says if you were going to buy it anyway and you get a deal, yep, that's the thing. I have walked on hot coals, and that brings me to my um, oh, seen it used on Periscope. Oh God, um, I did walk on hot coals. So what happened was I went to this uh, thing with my friend, and she said no, and I'm like, I'm investing in my future. If you're not going to invest in your future, then you can be a loser, and I'm going to be a winner. Anyway, so I went to this weekend seminar, and she was like, Bron, it sounds like rubbish. And this guy was channeling Tony Robbins, but in a really awful way and I just sat that through about half of a thing like he used to he did things like say so now I have a moment's silence and then he went like that and I was like oh my god he, I do it on the side he went like that and I was like oh my god get me out of here so we'd had a workbook in the morning I'd done the fire walking on the Friday night that I uh, walking over the coals and I was just like you're just a poor man's Tony Robbins I want out and so I said to the guys I was like I don't want to be here and it was in a it was in a hotel by Heathrow I said, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm leaving. And they had bouncer type people who grabbed my workbook and like, like pushed me. And I was just like, get your fucking hands off me. I can't believe this. And he said, you can't leave with your workbook. I'm like, but you're not giving me a refund anyway, because we'd already discussed that. They were like, no, you can't get a refund because you're not staying the whole weekend. If you stayed the whole weekend, you could get a refund. It was like, it's like about 500 pounds, I think. And then, um, yeah, pushed me and I was like, I'm out. So I just left and I said, rip up my workbooks. They had personal stuff in it and they wouldn't give it back. So, yeah, really consider those selling wow. from the stage. That's actually my only, my only experience of it. So, yeah. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> it was I'd, really I'd creepy. To ask, you know, um, a question of the audience specifically. In terms of you building your business online, um, what is the biggest challenge that you're currently facing if it's not strategy? Mm -hmm. Just shows that people are sometimes desperate. I know. Very desperate. Capital for inventory, says oh. Nick. What, 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 what type of product do you sell? I mean, what physical product do you sell? Good problems. Yeah. <laughs> if you're growing really fast, that is a nice problem. Speak nice to your bank. Yeah. The bank manager, <laughs> got but, money coming. If you've got orders, you can get capital anyway. Yeah, you can. Have to pay a high interest rate. Yeah, you can. If you have orders, you can you can borrow against your orders. Mm. That's for sure. So and mine is. You can borrow against your receivables. Sales on Periscope. Oh, sales um, on Periscope. Yeah, so mine I think tech. with mine is all tech. Tech. Those are my so you've got tech issues. Yeah, I just don't know how to do like ninety percent of it. You can outsource some of your stuff, though, don't you? You outsource yeah. things. And you've got a yeah, VA. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's it. I think it's it's nice to know what your strengths are and really work to those. So mine is being the front person. Mine is, um, you know, being on board. If, if Brennan's still here, she's a bloody lifesaver saviour. And she <laughs> saves my ass all the time. Hi, Life Sparkle, your fab future. Tired of settling for silver when gold is within your reach. Cute. I'm following your ass. See, look. Mine, mine would probably be if I had any issues. It's probably just clarifying my message and my brand is that like my customers. You know, I think the the best people out there that are so successful, their branding is like bang on. Their message is crystal clear. You know exactly what they do. Yeah. You know, 
And I think because I'm transitioning from my like the the um, company, like, like having a company, everything will still run under the company. But I'm transitioning to using my own name as my branding. I think I've really just got to nail my branding and my message. And mm-hmm. once I've got that, then that I think that's half the problem. So the rest is just visibility, getting out there, you know. Yeah, visibility. Doing, doing things like this, doing videos and content. Provide content. Just provide good content. Um, and Deb, I, I, totally, I totally agree. But And if you have a look at it as well, it, with getting clarity on that specific message, um, I think it is when you get known for that specific one thing. So let's take a look at Denise Duffield thomas I mean, she's known as the money block chick. I mean, the rich bitch. Yeah. She has, yeah. that is it, that is it. Does she offer everything else to you when you work with her? Of course she can, but she's yeah. known for that one thing. Catherine Hocking, she's known for her e-course formula, you know, yeah. which means that she is niched right down and she's made sure that she has just got that one thing that she's known to, known for. Yeah. Can she do the whole spectrum? Of course she don't, she can. That's she could probably do exactly. all about everything. Yeah. But it's yeah. to nail that one thing so that people see you consistently putting yeah. out that same message and they're not wondering, okay, what, what is she doing today? What is she yeah. doing today? What is she doing? That type I of think thing. That's where I was going wrong. Like just over this week, I've just sat down and I'm just like working out, okay, what am I offering? Because look, I can do opt ins, I can do lead magnets, I can do sales funnels, I can do all the tech side, I do websites and all that. But you know, I've now got an, I've done my online Facebook course. I've got to decide, okay, where am I putting my focus? What's my message going to be? And whatever they need help with around that, well, we can work with that. Yeah. yeah. That's so, the thing for me. It's, it's niching down. So I started out and I'm a copywriter and I run So You Think You Can Launch for online courses and Sarah and Deb are both on my course. And... Um, so my thing has been doing like web stuff, doing branding workshops, doing copywriting, and now I'm focusing and niching down on the courses. So so you think you can launch, which is um, in pre-launch phase at the moment, and that's my jam. And doing the copywriting as well, because I love it, and getting flow, and it's amazing, but having something that you are known for and that you're yeah. going out there and doing is super important. And so... In my business, I've flip flopped, and over the last eighteen months, I'm like, "Oh yeah, now I'm going to do that. Ah, oh, yeah, now I'm not going to do that because I've got like agency background, I've got ten years in digital, so it's like I could have done, I could have gone through different things, but then I had to find what makes me happy and what my strengths are, and it's sales page copy, it's um, getting visible, it's getting online, it's mentoring people through the entire process, which can be pretty freaking stressful, and making and helping them." <laughs> come out the other end successful and not losing their mind so. <laughs> not being like mental or yeah <laughs> not losing put on a straight jacket or anything <laughs> yeah because it is it is it's such like oh a, deb i have i have my white situation. one my white life jacket hanging over my chest every time i need it I, and i want to feel comforted i just put it on hug myself <laughs> <laughs> I love what um, Sarah just said. You can't be all things to all people. So true. And I think that's what we try to do, don't we? I know when I first started out, I just tried being, you know, I was trying to like, I could do this and I could do this. And I was, you know, you show people that you can do everything. But, yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. you've got it. I think the secret and the key is just really nailing it. Um, Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So what's your biggest challenge in business, Brenda? What have you found your biggest challenge to be? I think my biggest challenge is not having people around me. I um, I love, um, just love people and I love talking yeah. and I do a lot of it. And so for me, being isolated as a, as a solo entrepreneur definitely does get to me some days. I, yeah. I want the companionship. I want the being able to just turn around to somebody and say, hey, you know, what do you think of this idea? And have somebody there instantly to share everything with even if it's just a celebration you know like last week or this week if something good happened now online i've actually got to go and find somebody to speak to or i've got to pick up the phone and call somebody or i've got to try and post it um in a post and it loses it's almost like if i'm trying to say yay i'm celebrating you know and that's how do i do that online it's difficult do a oh, video yeah. by the time you press record and you're like uh, 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 and then it's, it's gone it's like oh it's over now well one of the things <laughs> i actually have actually i actually have a few more and one of them you touched that. on the other day um bron is um you said you would help me so i better take you up on the offer is yeah, yeah, coming yeah. up with 
the headline, a really catchy headline for something. Yeah. It's just like, oh, that creative brain is not working. <laughs> One, yeah. of, one of the things that I decided to do because I was isolating a lot, and so I'm just going to tell you about it. Maybe this will work for you. I don't know. But I realized that, you know, when I worked in an office, I would go to lunch with people I worked with. I, I'd see them every day. And so I started scheduling online lunches. You started what? Sorry, going out for lunch. No, no. Scheduling I, online lunches. Yeah, so I'd actually schedule lunch because here's the thing. Like when you're a kid, your your play dates and your your fun is all like structured for you. But when you're an adult, like I, I had to realize this, like, oh, I'm an adult now. I actually have to <laughs> plan things out and like plan my social events. And one of the things was lunch. So I actually <laughs> plan lunches with people, online lunches, right? Yeah. So that I have something, you know, inter you know, where I'm interacting with someone. Yeah, definitely. I actually go out for lunch a lot just so I can talk to waiting mm. staff. I'm like, mm. hi, and take my dog for a walk and go and just sit somewhere and have lunch. And it's so nice just to be out of the freaking house. And people are it like, is. oh, should I? I'll come over to your house. I'm like, I've been in my house all week. I've been in my house like for, you know, 23 hours out of the day. Let's go somewhere else. So yeah, it's just. It's not because it's so easy to become a hermit crab, isn't it? So that's another thing for entrepreneurial success. It's your entire network, whether it's online or the waiters down the road that might stop and have a chat to you. It's so important to have people to talk to. Do you it's know, I, down, Sarah. Do you know, Bron? <laughs> just with you saying that, oh, bye, Sarah. See ya. Um, I just think um, it's so easy if to get stuck in that sort of hermit mode and stay in. Um, in, in your office and just do your work and all that. But then I found I found that actually getting out of that again is even hard. It makes yeah. it hard like to get in front of a video again, or you know, once you've not once you go out of practice of doing it. Oh, um, totally. I, I find totally. it hard to get back into the swing of things. So it's really totally. if we. I, I love Blab for this reason. So you can pop on and, and chat to people and feel normal again. Oh, that's so high here. So um, it, it's okay. <laughs> She's got the kid. So Martha just did in the comments, she found this as well. When the crash see her coming, at the end of the day, they know it'll take 30, or 10, I was going to say 30 minutes. God, you're probably paying them to speak to you. 10 minutes to get rid of me because I like to vomit talk just to connect to a real person. <laughs> Oh my God, I've done that like when I was flatting in London, my teammates would come home and I'd follow them around. I live by myself now, so I just talk to myself. And I'd just follow them around the house going, and then this happened, and then this happened. They're just like, Bronwyn, stop. I just walked in the door. You know what, what I heard the other day is apparently women have a really high rate of words we have to talk a day. Guys, I can't remember the numbers, but women have a crazy amount of number we have to get through during throughout the day. And yeah. men have such, like, it's not even half. It's like a quarter of what women have, right? Yeah, and men so, have, like, two words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But well, I can't remember the number of thousands. Hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. Hi. Um, I can't remember the number of thousands. But so when my husband gets home, I'm like, oh, honey, I've had this idea and I want to talk about this and I'll be talking about everything. He'll be like, yep, listening. And I'm like, so what do you think? And he got, like, babe, I've done my words for the day. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> the, the difference between men and women again. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Where are you from, Martha? Where are you calling? Where are you calling in from today? I sound like a talk show host. Uh, I'm calling in from Ireland. Ireland, oh. deeper. <laughs> Ireland. Yeah, I used to work with an Irish guy and come in and be like, top of the morning to you. And he's like, you've got to stop that. You've got to stop that right now. That is not even funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, because we all say it. Also like him Rory. His name's this Rory. Rory. than what you're normally on, isn't it, Martha? What's that? What's that? Isn't that later than what you're normally on? You're normally on, like, earlier, our time, anyway. I'm late tonight. I'm being very naughty. It's 10 to 1 in the morning. Oh, there's some feedback oh, coming from somewhere. Oh. I'm not quite sure me? where that's coming from. Is that me? Is that me? I'm going to use yeah. my... Should I yeah, pay? try your headphones again, Martha. You've got headphones there, eh? Yeah. I okay, yeah, do that. Try your headphones when you come back. You're all right with me, eh? I don't need my little headphones. Yeah, you're all right, yeah. Sweet. You're all right, Deb. You're all right. <laughs> so I, I'm always conscious of the time because I could talk for hours. We've got 10 minutes. So um, yep. just a 
one check there over Hello? in the corner. Hi. Oh, that's better. Oh, that's much better. So, um, yeah, the echo is better than your kid screaming. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's give you some props first because, you know, otherwise people come on and think, oh, no one likes Martha. <laughs> So, I'm an um, online entrepreneur and I've no one to talk to. Nobody likes me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the um, So um, what do you do as an entrepreneur, Martha? Um, so I do two things. Um, one is online business mentoring. And the other one is I run a program called Amazing Me Mums. Because oh, cool. I've got two kids, four and two. And I spent four years of those years lost. And I yeah. teach other women to care for themselves, to um, mind themselves. So I have a background as a software engineer, then retrained as a nutritional therapist. I put my business wow. online, and then I teach yeah. others how to put their business online as well. I, I, when I um, I met Martha a little while ago, and she was telling me that when um, she she had a woman once, and she goes to this room, and it's got like whiteboards. Mm -hmm. And um, she goes in there. And she, she'll have people walk in there, and they'll have they, they know they have an idea, but they'll walk out with a fully like they'll just draw over the thing. They'll have, she they walk out with a fully planned business, and I'm like, I love that. Mm -hmm. I want to go to that room. Yeah, <laughs> That's really, that that room. Um, if that room could talk, like um, the girl actually, <laughs> I can tell you about her now because she. Um, uh, I'm sure she won't mind because she's it's her business now. If you go to ruthmckenna.com, I'll put in and um, ruthmckenna.com. And um, she came in and she didn't know what she wanted to do. Um, and I'm not breaking any confidentiality here because she's trying to get her business out there now. And um, so basically we went through a couple of different scenarios. And then we said... Yeah, there's still more feedback, isn't there? That goes to Paul McKenna, the hypnotist. Oh, no, 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 Ruth McKenna. I think there was a gap there. I was just like, yeah. what? She's got thin sleep and a, a gastro band. I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> But um, anyway, she left at the end of the day, um, and her new business is called The Fertility Companion. Oh, yeah. So it's basically helping women, guiding them through the – the lonely journey of IVF because there's a lot of people you can't actually talk to. So it's, um, yeah, it's incredible. So she left with the business. It's great. Oh, that's a nice that's feeling. Isn't it? I do love a good brainstorm to get mm. things out there. And yeah. the thing is, once um, when you're talking about your own stuff, you can't see it as clearly as what other people can see it. So yeah. it's quite nice to have somebody that knows what they're talking about, first of all, and yeah. can come up with creative ideas and but also draw things out of you that you didn't even know was in there sometimes. And so, that's the thing. And like what you were saying the other night, Debs, like even myself, like I do it for other people and like I will do it for myself, but you still need someone to help you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You will get there. You will get, it, it'll fast track you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You'll will. get there eventually. You might get there six months or a year, but if you do it in a day, you'll just... It, it's so true. You know, to say, really, yeah. Sorry, carry on, Brenda. Oh no, that's okay. Um, there was this little old adage that says you can't see the spot that you're standing on, and that is so yes. true. You need somebody else so to look true. in to see the spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So true. I like that. I'm going to use that. I'll try and credit you, but I might cool. forget and then claim it as my own. <laughs> that's okay. It's not mine either. No, I, was, I was telling um, Martha the other day that we that there was I was just having a day where I was just like completely overwhelmed, like what am I doing, you know? And I ended up having a um, call with one of the coaches up in Auckland here, and she said to me, she goes, "You have all the answers within you." She goes, "You just need some clarity to draw them out." And so yeah. I had to go there, and after I'm like, you know what? Why why didn't I see that? Like, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I still look now, and I'm like, that was sitting right in front of me. Why didn't I see that that whole thing? I just so, yeah. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's I think um, being in a mastermind, and, and that's what I've just set up. Just set up a free mastermind, just with a couple of women, um, and, and I think it's going to be amazing to just be able to, you know, women that are sort of, you know, at the same sort of level as you that um, you're not mentoring, but you're helping each other. Yeah, and I'm so yeah. I'm so excited about that because I think we can. What's really... your link to your mastermind, Deb? Put it oh, in the yeah. comments if you like. Martha, oh, are you a I'm... member of the Moxie Entrepreneur? 
Absolutely. Come on over. It's just it's just in the a member of the Moxie Entrepreneurship Facebook group. And Brenda also has a Facebook group if you want to mix with other like minded entrepreneurs. So oh, yes, and Brenda, if you want to stick your links in. <laughs> Agree. Clarity is key. Makeover Warden. How did you sneak in there? I didn't even see you come in. <laughs> oh, Dan. Oh, I did see you come in. I was like, you know what happens on the blabs? Okay, I'm going to be a little bit controversial here because now I know that it's you. Um, <laughs> I think that um, your name trumps everything in a blab and on Periscope. Having a, your brand name as your handle isn't doing you any favours because people aren't going to call you out as much. And also, like, people start it's, – it's a very personal thing, not a, um, not a brand thing because I, I came in to – I think it was, no, it was to uh, Blab as a brand. And then I thought, actually, this isn't a brand thing. This is a personal thing that you're, then you bring your brand into the conversation. So Why that's not? the tip I would have for today. Because when I'm looking at the people like Peach Social, Cherie, um, like now I know that it's Cherie, but by the next thing, because my brain is like a sieve, then I'm going to forget that. And then I'll be like, oh God, is that Eleanor? And then Eleanor, I knew she didn't have a thing. So quite nice to know for people to know who you are mm. and to build your own personal brand as well yeah yes, I think you I can change the Twitter handle. yeah yeah I would make up another Twitter handle I think you can change yeah. it can you I think you can I'm not quite sure I'm I don't know sure. actually but if you're going to embrace blab as a platform then it's actually worth um doing another one without yep. losing your followers. I'm not quite sure, Cherie. Um, yeah, might have to look into that. Hi, Byron. Byron's like our favourite guy that doesn't get put off by all of our ladies <laughs> in the group. I um, also think um, in, in, in terms, terms of the branding, of <laughs> yeah. you can change your Twitter handle, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I also think um, it, it's also in terms of your branding. If you're a coach, um, a, you know, if you're a coach, an author, a speaker, um, anything that has to do with services or selling information products as well, and you're branding yourself, it's important to use your own name because people will start seeing you as the brand. Um, because you are your brand. I mean, you can't separate who you are from your business. You are your brand. And so it's very important for them to be able to, in that, you know, front of mind space all the time to think of this is, this is who you are. Yeah. I think it depends on what your business is because yeah. some names are catchy. Like, for instance, when I sign off my emails, I sign up Bron from Brand Moxie because if it's just Brand Moxie, people might not know. Having a yeah. mix of both, and I always say it's Bron from So You Think You Can Launch and and talk about that. And that name is more recognisable and catchy than Bronwyn Martin. And especially in America, people are like, Bronwyn? Bronwyn? You know, and they don't know. So, And it's it's Welsh, and it means white-breasted. So thanks, Mum and Dad. That's amazing. Thank That's you very much. Yeah. <laughs> white-breasted. Mm. Yeah. From Wales. Um, yeah, so on that note, what we want, what I want to do now is I want to go around – and for everybody to say, um, just like one closing out tip, no pressure, girls, on the line, one closing out tip for somebody that needs to know something about entrepreneurial success. So it could be just recapping one of the success um, factors that you spoke about earlier, just something that if you know, if you were struggling or if you know somebody that's struggling or just something to give somebody some pep in their day, some motivation, what yeah. would you say? Okay. I will Should I go first to give you guys some time to think? Okay, go for it. I'll go first. Okay, I'd just say keep going. Don't quit. It's like sometimes when you are, and we talked about the messy middle because Brene Brown put that in her, her new book, I think it was. Just keep going. And I have just come out of the messy middle and I can see now light and it's just like this big shining light and it's like, keep going. <laughs> now it's like a disco light, but before it was just like a little pinhole camera. I was like, I can't see the light. And sometimes you're facing in the wrong direction. You can't go back. You have to keep going. So that's yeah. my little. Move towards the light. <laughs> yeah. unless, unless you're dying, then just stay. <laughs> just stop <laughs> until the doctors can bring you back. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> What's yours, Brenda? Um, okay, so mine is you can't sell a secret, okay, mm -hmm. which means that, um, it, and it's, it's, it's really interesting because this is what a coach told me many years ago, and he said if you really it. and truly, um, what, you know, you've got to put yourself out there, and putting yourself out there and becoming visible may mean that you need to get rid of those limiting beliefs that stop you from yes. putting yourself out there. 
You can't change the world. You can't fulfill your purpose. You cannot make a difference in other people's lives if you're not prepared to step out and be visible so that you can make the change in this world. Do it. Love it. Just love it. Get, it, get over the fear. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Oh, love Absolutely. It. Awesome. How about you, Martha? Um, I would say. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> Echo, 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 echo. I would say to own your own story. <laughs> Let's leave you at that, Darth Vader. <laughs> own your story. Re, re, re. <laughs> and Deb? <laughs> um, probably believe in yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Believe in yourself. Take action, even if it's imperfect. You're not going to get it right the first time. You probably won't get it the second time either. <laughs> yeah, just... Just keep screwing up and keep picking yourself up and keep going. And yeah. um, Martha, own your story and keep writing it until you love your story. I like yes, it. Thanks for I coming like on, that. Byron, with that lovely advice. It's always a pleasure having you on the call. You're our favourite guy. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Brenda, for being my co-host today. And thanks, Martha and Deb, for jumping on. It was so fabulous. And thank you, everyone else, for showing up in the comments. You're amazing. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Take care, you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.